Hi everybody, this is Brittany from Bottom Louise and Knits, and this is a knitting channel all about what I've been making and what I've been doing as far as knitting goes. So I am happy that you are here today. I have lots to show you. So buckle up, grab something good to drink, and I will see you in a little bit. One, two, three. <laughs> everybody so I am wearing a finished object it is not quite finished because I haven't blocked it and I have a little bit of a snafu that I have to fix over here um, I said this in the last episode I think where I thought I had woven in my ends all the way and I did not sadly so I have a little bit of adjusting to do that is my dog his name is Bear. He is a border collie, an elderly border collie. So he wants to be by me right now and is going to be making some hot border collie noises. And I apologize for that. I feel like every time I sit down to record, it is so noisy. Like the last episode, it was cicadas. And I tried my best when I was editing to try to get rid of all of the cicada noise. But couldn't couldn't even do all of it. So <laughs> I apologize for that. Um, today, it just rained out. So the lighting isn't as great, but there should be less cicada noise. So, you know, we take what we can do uh, when we can do it here. Okay, so what was, oh, this is the Outline Raglan by Jessie Made. I made it out of Pearl Soho Cotton Pure which is a sport weight, 100% cotton yarn. I wore it to knit night yesterday and I got lots of compliments from people. This is the Lavender Rose colorway and it has this really pretty drop stitch design, which I have never done a drop stitch intentionally on a garment before, um, but it makes this really cool, like choo -choo, all the way down the front and also the back. Um, my drop stitch is a little bit wide, so I am wearing like a tank top underneath because having a drop stitch all the way this way, like what if it shifts, like you're just looking at bra at that point. So I plan on styling it with a tank top, or I think you could wear this over dresses and it would look really cute. So, or a jumpsuit. That might be a little hot in St. Louis, but depending on your climate, jumpsuit too. So yes, almost done. Just needs a good blocking and a little, a little repair, but I've, I've worn it. I like it. One of my intentions for this year was just to make sure that I actually am wearing the things that I knit. Um, so I joined a knitting group that meets on Friday nights and like we all talk about how much we just really want to get objects done and finished and looking good and then woefully people don't wear a ton of their knitting and I was like you know I'm gonna start wearing mine like all the time and we're just gonna see how it goes or at least a knitting group because like people know what you did and they recognize the pattern and they want to know what yarn it is and it's just fun to talk about so show off those knits if you've got them all right, so I have lots of finished objects and I have lots of acquisitions. So I might do like a whirlwind, like of all of the things, just so that you can see what they are and also so that I can put them away. So I did a little repair on this guy. I made this for my youngest son. He's two, his name is Redford. And one of the little arms fell off and I was very sad about it. So we did a little repair. Um, this is a, a finished object from way back when, but it's a little teddy bear. Um, the pattern is on Ravelry. It is a free pattern. It is a tricky pattern to follow initially, um, but there are some notes for the very beginning, like how you get started 
there's not a whole lot of information. So somebody put down what they did and I just followed what they did and it worked out perfectly. Um, such a cute little guy holding his legs a little. Um, and a little tricky. This is not my first like stuffy or lovey I've made. I also made the Elijah Elf elephant. Um, and that pattern was really fantastic to follow, but is a paid for pattern. So I thought I would try a little bunny for kid number two. Or not bunny, bear, bear for kid number two. And I've been very excited about it. So if you're thinking about getting or knitting something for a baby and you're not really sure what to knit or what to make, a little lovey or a little stuffy, I think, is really nice. Um, particularly because depending on like who the mom and dad are of the baby, they might have a lot of crafters that are going to do crochet or quilted blankets. Um, typically, I let, like tend to make blankets for babies, and I think that's a pretty safe way to go. Some people make clothing items, and just from somebody that has two little kids, I don't even knit my own kids' clothing items a ton, um, you know, to each their own, but laundry and accidents, <laughs> I'm like, I don't really want to deal with that. But I know that there's really awesome like superwash yarns and, and baby friendly yarns that you can be using. But lovey, lovey stuffy has been a really great addition to our family. All right. Another finished object that I'm super excited about. I should put these on my soft lockers which I didn't do ahead of time. Um, I have two pairs of socks from patterns that I've already knit and talked about quite a bit. But one new sock pattern. Um, one of the girls at Knit Night was making one of these and I was like, oh, I want to too. So I am a complete copycat. This is the Midnight Dancer sock pattern by Sari Nordland. I've never knit anything from Sari Nordland, um, but this was a great like maybe introduction to her work. I love, like it's a simple, just simple um, top down sock and it has this really pretty ruffle detail. It is a pretty beginner friendly pattern other than this ruffle to get cast on and not twist those stitches was pretty miserable. So I had to think about which cable to use and then I had it on to short of a cable and then my um, stitches twisted and that happened like two or three times that I had to cast on um, each of these socks and yes each of them like I had to <laughs> I had to redo it and you don't know that it's twisted until you're like a bit down and then it forms a Mobius kind of loop and it's a nightmare but I mean this end product is so pretty. This colorway, if I can get it in closer, this is um, by Stress Knits, Stacy L. Stone's hand dyed yarn. Um, this is on a sparkle sock, so I don't think she does any sparkles. This was early on in her dye career, but I got it on a D stash on Ravelry, and this colorway is, I believe, in fairies. And I'm pretty sure she's an 80-20 lover, like 80% wool, 20% nylon, um, but so cute. And I think a perfect colorway for this kind of pattern. So those are finished. I have lots more socks that I wanna knit on. Knit on, cast on, knit in general. I have a lot that I wanna do because as I said, that knitting club I don't know if it's a club, but the knitting girls that I've been knitting with, um, a lot of them are making socks and they all knit kind of fussy <laughs> in, in, a, in a lovely, endearing way, fussy, fussy socks that have lace and cables and color work and lots of stuff going on. And I have so many of the same, like two patterns. Um, that I say are like the ant antithesis, antithesis 
of uh, Fussy Socks. So this is DRK Every Day by Andrea Mowry. This was yarn that I picked up in Montreal when I went there for a girl's trip. Um, beautiful colorway. Very, very cool speckles. Um, do I know the colorway? No, I do not. Do I know the dyer? No, I do not. But it was somebody, it was a local Montreal one. Um, and it's very pretty. If I find the ball band, I'll put it like a link to what it was in the description or on the screen. So that was DRK Everyday Andrea Maori pattern. That one I absolutely love. It is a toe-up sock pattern, um, which seems to be like my default lately, but a lot of the, the fussier <laughs> um, socks tend to be top-down, I think. So you get like into the knitting pattern really well as you're going down the leg. Um, so I might adjust. I started with top down or like leg down socks. So I'm comfortable knitting either way, but my two like go-to patterns, this is the other one. This is the vanilla sock, uh, which is toe up after thought heel, which is like the whole name. And I talked about this pattern quite a bit because you put in a little bit of waist yarn in and then you knit the heel afterwards after doing the whole sock tube. And this is a Cascade Heritage print, maybe, yarn. I have another ball of it. Yes, Cascade Heritage print. This one in my acquisition was very Halloween-y colors. It's supposed to come out Ooh, with this kind of pattern. This one was called 01, but I feel like they had better names. It was like 80s and like punk, 80s punk or something. Um, but this just reminded me a lot of Halloween. So I bought another one to knit. This is my first like really patterned, not my first, second. This is my second really patterned kind of sock um, that just self patterns. And it was really interesting, particularly in the like striped and speckled bits. Like I, I didn't know what I was going to get, but I think it's actually like pretty cool looking. Um, and I've been excited. I'm excited to wear those. I just think they're like fun, a fun little sock. So those are all of the, all of the socks that I have finished in the past couple of weeks. I cast on a new pair, so I'll show you those next. These are the Hibernal sock. And it has this really lovely, let's see if I can just maybe put it slightly on the sock locker, um, pattern. It's obviously top down <laughs> so that you can see what I've been knitting. Um, these are a spoof, I guess, on the hibernal sock because I accidentally left out row four. It's a four round, four round repeat, and I left out number four. <laughs> so I just did a three round repeat. Um, but I think they're really, really lovely, really pretty. Such like for it being a, a fussier, you know, patterned sock. It is like a faux cable detailing. Uh, super easy to memorize, super intuitive to knit. And the Hibernal sock is by the pattern here. I was planning on writing these things down. Do you think I did? No. Uh, this is by Summerlee Design Company. Um, and she has a YouTube channel and I just started watching some of her episodes and she's really funny. I feel like in real life, I would totally be friends with her. Um, and I'm looking for the ball band on this sock yarn. Do you think I have it? No, I don't. Um, but I know that this one was from a mystery subscription like a yarn subscription and it's from sweet sparrow 
yarns. Um, so I did a little subscription box with her. And the subscription that I did were, what was the theme? It was like Irish deities, fairies, folklore. Um, yeah, which I was very, very pleasantly surprised. I had never done a yarn subscription box. And I don't think I will do another one, but I was in very good hands with Sweet Sparrow Yarns. I love all of her colorways, and I love what she um, set out. And, and she did a full skein of yarn and a little stitch marker that correlated with each colorway, which I thought was pretty awesome. And I have a lot of sock yarn. That's, <laughs> that's the only reason why I'm not going to do another subscription box anytime soon. But if I were... Sweet Sparrow Yarns is a really great one. Okay, two more finished objects. Sweater. This is the Winter Crop by Jessie Made Designs. I made it in a lovely, like, boucle yarn. Um, it was the yarn that the pattern called for. So it's like wool folk boucle in this nice, dusty pink. The yarn was on deep sale. <laughs> from Spun Ann Arbor, which is a yarn store there. And I was like, I gotta do it. I gotta do it. Um, it's really oversized. I did not knit it to the dimensions that the pattern called for. So her original design, really kind of like rib detailing, I mean not rib dealing, but any, it has negative ease, or at least it, that's the way it looks on the model. Um, and mine is very oversized, like teddy bear sweater vibes and it's really cute um and this is my other finished object that i wanted to show you guys this is the no frills sweater by petite knit this i made out of drops two different held together it was the drops um mohair and then really standard one and then now I can't think of what the name is anyway uh this mohair kid silk uh, drops I am not in love with this thing is the itchiest itchiest sweater I have ever made probably the itchiest sweater I will ever even attempt to wear I'm super sensitive and I bought a bunch of mohair from Drops and I was like, it's going to be fine because people knit with it. And I see I'm like already itching. It's, <laughs> it's an issue. It's a problem for me. I don't really know what I'm going to do with that other mohair. I don't know if I should attempt to knit with it. It didn't bother me as I was knitting. So that was why I just kept going. Um, but then when I get it like on my face and like neck not my favorite <laughs> all right so those were all of the things that I had finished I showed you one works in progress I'll show you another works in progress this is the puff tea and this is by I am having real issues with like remembering what is what. It is by a yarn company, Knitting for Olive. There we go. I'm not knitting it in Knitting for Olive. This is the Drops Alpaca Silk. And this does not itch me at all. So this is going to be my like new alternative. Whenever it calls for mohair, I will probably just do the alpaca silk instead because it is, the dog moved the camera a little bit, sorry everybody, um, a similar kind of weight and has that fluffiness that I think the mohair brings. So I'm really excited. I'm like most of the way through the body. The sleeves are to be determined. I did the puff, but this should have like, really kind of cinched in and mine didn't cinch in as much as it should have. Um, and the reason for that is I didn't read the pattern correctly. So I just kind of <laughs> kept doing what I was doing instead of doing more decreases here. I tried it on and I actually really liked the way that it looked. So I'm going to finish the body 
try it on again, block it, try it on again, and decide, do I need to tear off that ribbing? And do it one more time. Um, so that work in progress. And that drops alpaca silk is 77% alpaca, 23% silk, and this is color 34. You can tell I'm like into this lavender purple color, which normally I lean more pink. So that's been an exciting little, um, sorry, I dropped the yarn off. An exciting little change for me. All right. Last works in progress, and hopefully by the time I film next time, I will have both of these done. This is my Miserina, Miserina, uh, little summer t-shirt by Caitlin Hunter. This was more knitting than what I anticipated. So I didn't realize in the pattern photos so it has this really beautiful little collar that you knit up and it's in this twisted rib and then you go into some short row shaping, which you can kind of see more on the back. And then it goes into this lace motif. All of this was like, I was cruising, feeling really great. And then we get into color work, but the color work also has these cables um, in between the color work um, motifs. So what ended up happening was you would have to do color work and then you also had to catch your floats because the transition between the different colors was a little bit too many stitches. So like you end up with these really, really, really long floats in there. So I was trying to catch some of them. And then ever so often you have your cable <laughs> twist. Um, row. So I have never knit something so complicated. Um, but I felt very accomplished when I did, you know, the lace and then the color work and the cables. I was like, yes, I like, I'm, I know what I'm doing. Like, look at this. <laughs> um, now with that being said, I don't know if this is going to be the, finished object of my dreams, but we'll see. I like this motif part. When I went into the color work cables, my tension really, um, I was pulling tighter. So when I look at it against my body, I'm like, this is way too small. Like we gotta, we gotta really stretch that out. Um, and then my color work motifs are so much, um, shorter in height than what the pattern designers looks like or what most of the people on Ravelry's finished objects look like. So I had to add a bunch of rows down here before I did sleeve separation. So most people admit like two rows after the color work and then just did sleeve separation and my sleeve separation is way down here because it's that big of a discrepancy. And I knew that going in because I did a gauge swatch. My gauge swatch was like a little itty bitty mini um, in comparison to what it was supposed to be. So I chose a larger size for the pattern. And then I also chose a larger needle size. And I don't think it quite did it, but We'll see. I'm hoping that like an aggressive block is gonna really get it to kind of stretch. I have tried it on. And the only thing that I'm kind of worried about right now is that this part seems to like do like a little billowing, <laughs> little, little pooch um, at the top when it is on. But at the end of the day, like I don't think that's gonna make it so that it's unwearable. So we'll see. I'm excited to kind of figure out where that goes. And like I said, I think it's really great to kind of push yourself out of your knitting comfort zone and see where it's gonna go. Cause like, how are you gonna get better? You have to start, sorry, he knocked the camera again. Um, you have to start somewhere, right? Like you have to take the plunge of trying the socks for the first time or trying a garment for the first time or knitting a different motif or a stitch that you haven't done before. And I think every time 
you do that, you just get a little more, a little bit more confidence in your abilities as a knitter and what you're able to do. And what I have found is that most of the time when I procrastinate learning something new when it comes to knitting, I am almost 100% of the time astounded by like how not difficult that new technique actually is. So people are that are like, oh, I hate seaming. Seaming is horrible. Like I don't love seaming, but it it's not difficult. Or oh, brioche. Brioche is just one of those stitches that like, oh, it's, it's really not that bad. You just have to get used to it, right? And it's those were probably the two things that I was the most like, I don't know. I don't know if I can do it. And then I did it and it was like, oh, <laughs> like I understand why people complain about it, but also it's not that bad. <laughs> okay. Lots of acquisitions. We're going to go through these really quick because I'm already at 25 minutes. Um, there was a knitting festival in St. Louis. This is Oink Pigments. They're Targi Sock. 90% Targi, 10% Nylon. And this is their colorway. Doo, doo, doo. This is dyed in Indianapolis. And super dope heli heliotrope, which I thought would be super fun in maybe even the Sari Nordland pattern. I don't know. We'll have to, we'll have to think about it. Um, also, an acquired sock yarn from the same knitting festival. This is India Indigo Guinea fiber, which ah, I would buy that entire booth. Like she was one of the only ones that had speckled yarn and I am a real sucker for speckled yarn. This is her Sparrow fingering, which is a 7525. And this is called Bunny Tails. And like, so cute. I am very excited about those two. Then Webb's Yarn Store was having a sale, like for their 50th um, store anniversary. So I want to knit Colorbird socks. And I picked up a bunch of different colors of the Cascade Yarn Heritage, which is all a 7525. Let's see if I can go through colors. So this is number two. And I like all of these together almost. This is number two? No, it's not. That was lot two. This is 5781. And this one is a 5779. Just like a nice purple. And this is more of a blue tone. We have 5751, like a nice baby pink. I love this yellow color, maize, if you will. This is 57.52. And then sucker for the lavender right now. I just love it so much. 57.83. And then a little maybe 56.23. And like so many different cool color combos, I feel like could happen with this. So I have like a light purpley and a yellow. And like a purple and a blue could go well. And then like baby gender colors. I don't know. We could kind of flip it. Pink and blue. Blue and gold. Lavender purple. I don't really know. I don't know what colors I'm going to want to do next to what. But I do kind of like all of them together. I think it's a cool little color palette. And I like that navy in there. Even though... This is all pastels, almost. I guess the yellow and the maybe make it pop a little bit more. So lots and lots and lots of color work socks need to happen. Sorry for the crinkles. This also acquisitioned recently. This is my stress knits order. I only ever, per like I can never catch her updates. So I had the... I believe in berries yarn um, from a D stash on Ravelry. 
and she had these spring florals in this little mini set and it's an 80 20 superwash merino and that's her favorite sock base and I just I couldn't resist and I thought wow <laughs> It's actually really funny because the colorways are super similar to the Cascade um, heritage that I bought, but obviously hand dyed versions of that. And so excited about those. Um, another webs purchase is I was going to make some socks for my husband and he likes having uh, a heavy bit of nylon in there. So this is 75, 25 and another pattern. The pattern socks, I mean, if you want something that you just feel really accomplished along the way getting done, pattern socks is a good way to go with that because I just feel like you knit a stripe and you're like, wow, like I've, I knit a whole stripe today. It's so great. And I don't know. It keeps you, it keeps it going. It keeps you wanting to move through it. Okay. More yarn. You guys, I went way overboard because I didn't show you acquisitions before. So I have to take this one out. This is from the Lemonade Shop, which is one of my other favorite hand dyers. She had a little sock set. And this one was for the muffin, the muffin top socks. And this is kit number three, and she's a 75-25 with like that super speckled, super fun mini. Couldn't resist. And then the other update that I got from her was this Dunkin' Donuts themed with a little Dunkin' Donuts stitch marker. So cute. Let's see if I can get it to flip. It's hiding. It's hiding. Dunkin' Donut. Um and it's called her Dunks Limited Edition set, and this is 80-20. So, guys, I have a ton of socks. I have a ton of sock yarn to knit, as I was just talking about. I'm not going to do any more um, subscription boxes because I have too much sock yarn. Now you see why. Like, this is just all acquisitions, and I do have a stash as well. So, we... <laughs> feeling a little overwhelmed and I apologize for the crinkles here. I should have taken it out. Um, another hand dyer that I never seem to catch the updates on is Cat Sandwich Fibers. So I finally got a little update from her. This is her trusty which is 7525 in the strawberry glaze colorway and this is also trusty and this one is the colorway by the pool side. So super excited about those. No idea. Maybe like a mermaid sock. I think both of those would actually look very cute as mermaid socks. Okay. One last acquisition and then I'm all done. And I won't tell you a whole lot about my future plans. Well, maybe I will as I'm trying to open this box. Um... I have more summer <laughs> knitting I want to do and then obviously a ton of socks. So I think on the agenda for this upcoming week, I want to do a little mini mock neck tank swatch. I have an Alpine Bloom from Caitlin Hunter that I'll probably do after that. And then I bought some summer weight yarn to do well, the Alpine Bloom, and then a Moonset pullover. So I kind of want to do each of those. And I don't know which one, but one of those. And then the last acquisition that I have are these little stitch markers. And they're from Soft Spoken. They're obviously that little star motif um, from the quilt, which is another thing I want to do this year. I want to knit, or not knit, I want to quilt some blankets. <laughs> You know, sometimes our hobbies get a little out of hand, and that's how I'm feeling right now. I feel a little out of hand, but I have accomplished a lot, so I should feel good about that, and I have a lot more than I want to do, which it is always wonderful to have some knitting plans. So if you have any knitting plans for the season or on your radar 
or things that you're really excited about, please let me know. And like always, guys, thanks for joining me. And I'm hoping that I will see you all soon. Thanks, everybody. Oh.